And today we're here with celebrity chef David Burke. What makes a steakhouse more than just a steakhouse? When that steakhouse is David Burke Prime. The man himself is here, David Burke. Welcome, good morning. Good morning. Thanks Thank for coming you. to the dish. Thank you, my pleasure. This year, you can cook your bird and pretty much everything else in the dishwasher. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. This is the brainchild of the amazing chef, David Burke. You are crazy. Yeah. He's one of the most popular and innovative celebrity chefs on television. I'm making my nachos with uh, squid and squid ink. David Burke has put his culinary skills to the test on competitive cooking shows like Bravo's Top Chef Masters and the Food Network's Iron Chef America. I've never seen a challenger chef walk into such a stadium with such confidence. How do you feel? I feel good. Ready to go. Welcome to Red Bank. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the inside view. Yeah. Nice to have you. So what's uh, happening? It's trying to survive. Yeah. Trying to survive. You know, we're surviving and doing better than surviving, but it's just... Uh, uh, the lack of joy uh, in the restaurant business, <coughs> hospitality industry, small business in general, and uh, you know it's December. Yep. It just it's off to you know it's I know it's the end of this crazy year. Uh, it just doesn't you know this feels like you know, we've got to create some joy. Sometime, yeah. You know? It, you know you know what's weird too is is last night I was in the city and I, I we were eating at a couple different spots yeah. and restaurants and just like picking and like I'm seeing all these restaurants outside right and it's like. It's fucking 40 degrees, yeah, 35 yeah. degrees last night. It's freezing outside with like wind and people are sitting outside and I'm thinking to myself, I realize that like Europe, like before COVID and all this shit, this is how they do in Europe. Like they eat outside in 25 degree weather. Yeah. So it's- They just layer up. They just layer up. Like, you know, you go to Amsterdam or you go to Nice and they're, they're eating at the cafes outside in the middle of January and it's blistering cold out there. So I'm wondering if it's like, are people starting to adapt to like this whole outside scenic in the winter? I doubt it. No, we're, we're not, but it's, you, know, you got a couple problems with that. So the employees are going to get sick, right? Right, and then the employees are going to get everybody else sick. So yep. it's a, it's a, it's a so you're going in and out, so in and out, in and out, in and out. You got all these tree houses that are built on the street in New York City. So when we do get back to some normalcy, the traffic's going to be a disaster. So you won't be able to function as a city with the traffic. When, when we get, when people finally do come back to the city, whenever that is. So I think it's crazy that. Uh, but what's happening now, the indoor hut, outdoor huts are indoor buildings now. That's right. So because what's people are going to cheat, they're going to say it's too cold, right. put a window on, right. and next thing you know, you're sitting indoors outside. Right. right. <laughs> right. You're, buying, you're, you're, you're paying rent on a building you can't use. Right. Yeah. And utilities on a building you, you can't use. You just charge your parking So your lot. utility bill just tripled because you've got to light up and heat up outside as well as oh, inside okay. where the workers are. Yeah. And then you got to keep the door open and closed. Yeah. It's just I don't know. It's I, I I'm not a big fan of the outdoor dining when it's below forty degrees. Yeah, I know. Yeah, listen, I'm with you. I don't think it's you right know, for the why staff. Why did you sit outside last right. night, Nate? Or I mean, oh, it I is. Know, I I mean, but like they, they got open inside. So. My other problem is like I like my food piping yeah. hot, and for me, you bring it outside to me and it's cold. I'm like two and a half. Yeah, exactly. Get... I'm like, hurry up, eat, 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 eat. It's gonna get cold. <laughs> 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 It's just, we, we had so much stuff this summer. It's too hot out. You know, we had a dining room that was 100 yards away from the main restaurant. Waiters would kill themselves at 90 degrees. Jeez. You know, so, you know it's, it's 100 yards away from the bar, and somebody wants an extra olive in their martini. The waiter's like, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Go get it yourself. <laughs> 50 bucks. Yeah. 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 So, Dave, you have, you have a nickname, uh, the Culinary Prankster. Where'd that come from? I, you know what? I don't know. Where'd that, that come from? You're I tell you what, what, why it came about, because it came from Time Out Magazine many moons ago. And okay. they, they created a category, and I won Culinary Pranks of the Year, whatever year that was. Okay. But, you know, I play with my food. I, you know, I'm very <laughs> whimsical, and I, you know, I almost mock some of the classic things. Okay. And stiffy, stuffiness. I love of certain things and way to present it. Uh-huh. So, I, you know... For example, I created a dish made out of pork leg, pork shank, uh -huh. and uh, it was in a, it was in the '90s. Big hunk of meat that I I, I was introduced at a Hofbrau house in Munich, and I converted it into a fancier version of that. And all my partners like, "There's no fucking way this is gonna sell." Don't even put it on the menu. I'm like, and we had a really big argument about it. I was really, 
Passionate. I was passionate. No, this is it's time. Right. We had a big knife in it. It was a gaucho like bravado steakhouse dish, but it was pork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crispy skin around the outside, mm -hmm. and uh, and we served it with jalapeno apples. Those five great rubs. And basically, it won it won best dish in America in 1996 by USA Today when they had all of those newspapers wow. on every plane, and next to it was the fancy. Uh, Daniel Ballou, John George, all these fan truffles, right. foie gras, and that was the pork shank with apple sauce. Pork and apple sauce one best <laughs> this year. So that was kind of a prank dish. Basically take so somebody wrote that was the equivalent of me walking around the dining room and mooning people. <laughs> wow. So, so it was a it was a fun way of saying this too can be the best dish. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't strive for it to be a competitive dish. Yeah, they, well, that restaurant closed recently. But on any of the other restaurants, do you have it on the menu? Or? We have it in Ventanas. We run it as specials. It's a big hunk of gargantuan pork shank. And then we had underneath it, it said shanks a lot. Wow. <laughs> we charged $29 <laughs> for, like, shanks pork a on a bone. Yeah. Jeez. So, so, and we were just whimsical and a little bit, like, why, we had a why not attitude as opposed to a... Um, and we were serving lollipops and trees, bacon from a clothesline. Yeah. You know, we always took chances. So we we we, we would we swing at every pitch almost. I like that. You know, we're not we're yeah. here to play. Yeah. And that's how we approach some of the dishes we do. I mean, when you cook long enough, you know, at the end of the day, like I was explaining, if I was a winemaker, I wouldn't be able to have that much fun because I get one batch a year. That's right. So if I can cook, I cook. If I make a mistake, I don't like it. Hey, you know what? I, I can still eat it, and feed somebody, but it's not an investment of. Of a year's worth of crop, right? Mm -hmm. You know, sure. But yeah. why not? Cool. You dine out a lot. Always. Do you? Yeah. Well, until COVID. Well, forget COVID. COVID. I I bought a home in Atlantic Highlands a few months before COVID hit, so I really actually got to know what it's like to live in a real kitchen, a home kitchen, cook and buy, shop in a supermarket. Uh -huh. The chefs never eat at home. No, I was especially kidding. if you're yeah. single. You know, you don't. You know, you're out. You're out. And you work at night. Eat at your restaurant. Yep. Yeah. And if you are, when you're off, you know, you're trying to competition or you, you want to go out, you know, right. you go home. But I, I really f fell in love with home cooking. I started shooting the uh, Instagram videos, Chef David Burke, with my, I have a puppet. And the puppet. I noticed my, this puppet. Yeah, we saw we're that. Did, we you bring, did you bring the puppet? No, he's on. Ah. Oh. He's on Tinder now. He's on Tinder? Puppet. Yeah, he's on puppet. Wow. Tinder. He's, yeah. wow. He said, he said he's working too hard. So, uh, no, but somebody gave it me as a gift. An old girlfriend of mine gave me the puppet. I was in a closet. I'm home during uh, COVID. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to start doing some cooking videos and teach people how to how to use uh, his so name's leftovers. Cook leftovers at, at their house. And then it turned into this whole little rock and roll nice. funny video. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, the home life is pretty good if you if you have a good kitchen and you have it stocked and you mm. want to cook something. Yeah. So I was pretty uh, therapeutic, and because I don't cook like I used to, I cook every day. I'm more designing. Uh, Designing restaurants, operating them, and this and that. So it was good to just pick up a frying pan and, and put on some music. So what do you cook. what do you what do you cook at the house? What's it you go to? Well, I go to, I go shop. I got a couple. I have freezer full of stuff. Do I go shop? <laughs> I just decide right, I'm going to make I want to make latkes this week with the pop. I like latkes because you know? it's season. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then we'll make latkes with smoke, you know, then whatever it's else we got. Sauce. That can pull with apple sauce, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good idea. But how to make apple, that would be a great way to a segue to how do you make apple sauce cool. You know, you got to add jalapenos, some vinegar, you know, maybe some sriracha, spice wow. it up. How do you serve applesauce with scallops and fish? Pose it. And why is applesauce only served with pork? How come we don't serve applesauce with chicken? That's a good question. Those are the questions that you got to teach people. I've so, seen stone crab with applesauce. Oh, that's a good I'm idea. from Miami, so you go to Joe Stone Crab down there. I opened Smith & Walensky there. So you know. I mean, that's the signature get... dish with the yeah. with So the that Smith & Walensky had the pork shank on it. Did it? Yeah. Okay, that was, yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. And that still does happen, so... Yeah, but Joe's is great. That whole area has come so far in the last 25 years. It's at South Point. Oh, yeah. Yep. Still but, can't uh, have a reservation there, no matter who you know. I didn't know. Maybe you can get a table there, but... I went in there with a guy named Bob Lutz um, when the uh, Bears were in the Super Bowl. I don't know how many years ago. Yeah, okay. Saying. And he, he, went and he, walk, he had a party of 25 people. And we didn't have a reservation. He walked in and somehow he got a table. I don't know how to just, He put four tables together. And, you know, he's a major player. And I, that's a great restaurant. It's not the fanciest. It's not have the best food, the best wine. But there's something about it that just you 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 gotta have a good yeah, you I've have a good time there. when you're there. Yeah, and that's what's the it. key to some restaurants. It's, an experience. it's not always Even if the highest quality of everything. There's just something comes together that's exactly right. that makes you feel like a good I always time. tell everybody I'd rather go out for a decent food, decent meal right. experience 
with an incredible ambiance oh, yeah. than a shit ambiance yeah. with this or with the best meal or ever. Too or stuffy. Or too stuffy. Can't have fun. Yeah. Can't take your coat off. Can't yeah. lay. It's got to be a good yeah. balance. Make but people sure watch it. Like, See, that's yeah. the people why You go to like the, the bigger restaurants on the beach. And the scene is part and the music. It's part. I mean, of you got to eat decent. Yeah, they make cocktails and all. Sure. But yeah. You go there for a stone crab and a steak, and you're gonna be happy. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. 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 yeah there's, there's a there's a knack for. Uh, it's like we, we used to joke about like the old days of when you had this new stereo and you had all these knobs on it. That's a restaurant. There's like a hundred knobs and they all got to be like, keep fine tweaking tuned. them, yeah. fine tune everything, the lights, the music, the energy, the attitude, yep. the menu mix, the pricing, you know, all of this stuff. The perfect balance. Yeah. And as yeah. soon as you get it right, something changes. <laughs> yeah, seasons yeah. change, taste change, sure. Yeah. So Dave, you've had a, a ton of airtime. Um, one of the things that stands out for us is, uh, you know, your, your top yeah. chef, uh, seasons two and five. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about what that was like, because that's, that was like a well, really cool show. Season I two, I don't remember much of, uh, we didn't do it as well. I think I was going through some changes with regard to uh, moving out of one company to the next. Okay. Then season five, uh, season five did really well, you know, it was focused and, um, and we had a little more experience of what the reality show cooking was. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've judged it. So in this season, I came back as a contestant, and I competed against people I trained. Ah, that's and, cool. So I was like on the older side. Yeah. And there was younger, really, and we had a really good group of guys and girls, and it was fun. We had fun, and I was, yeah. you know, there was about eighteen of us to start. I got then down to number four, which was pretty good, and I was excited about it. But we had fun. And, you know, whether you win or lose, you don't want to lose in the beginning because you want the airtime. Yeah, of course. I mean, I spent a month in a hotel in L.A. with my sous chef because we kept winning. Right. So you're away from your business. And that's one of the reasons they don't do Top Chef Masters anymore because the master chefs are usually proprietors now. Right. So we have too much business. And they got to take your sous chef with you. Yeah. So it takes you away from your business. And you don't want to go and not win. You want, and, you know, There's a little bit more at risk. In your, sure. If you, if you think your reputation is everything. I kind of think that... Whether you win, lose, or draw in a t reality show, you still get some exposure. You know, oh, you don't absolutely. want to go out in the first round, but if you if you give it a great effort and a good show, who cares? It's, it's a right. month as far as if you get all the way. Well, to something's got to happen. I mean, obviously, you didn't have a good show if you're first one out. No, so. but the entire process. <laughs> let's say you get down to the wire. It's about a month as far as well, filming. Yes, well, yeah, you feel, and you work hard. I mean, they do of it. Of course, yeah. They, you know, you got to hustle. You know, we we work hard in general. But yeah, you're up early and you're moving. It's not a waiting. You know, you're waiting in the trailer, you're waiting while they yeah. change sets, and there's a lot of that, but they're longer days. But when you're moving, depending on the day, like, you know, they'll say, listen, you got seven hours to go shopping, make a meal for 100. This, that. Now, if you decide to make an easy dish, it's easier. We never think that way. We're like, I, I look at that show, and when I see shit like that with those challenges, I look and I'm like, are you, are you guys out of your mind? Like, <clears> go <throat> to the grocery store. And prepare a meal using only cherries and and you know three three bags of peanuts and make it taste perfect for a hundred people. I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't know how you guys do this. Well, you know, listen, we could use yeah. this. They let us. Uh, you know, it's pretty. It's on the up and up. You know, I mean, there's always you know a little bit of here and there of opinions, but uh, you know, we can use our cell phones. Okay. Because you know, we're businesses, so we weren't like, oh, you can't. Let. So I'm sure people looked up. We don't really need recipes. We right, 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 right. But when you do pastry, you got to look at some things or ratios or whatever. But in general, you know, if you got it, you got it. If you don't, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's timing. There's things you didn't, you couldn't get, or you might have burnt. You know, cut yourself. Some guy would cut himself on the first show so he could eliminate because he couldn't finish. Jeez. You know, and. Uh, you know, I was on Iron Chef years ago with Flay, and one of my guys, I burned myself really bad, but I didn't flame. You know, I had the camera on me, I was like, and I was just like, shit. And I had the grease all over my hand. With, but no one knew about it because it just kept going. I was like, this. No what were you cooking? Do you remember? Uh, lamb chops. Okay. I lot it was fat. So you're working with other people. Yeah, I can So I see told that uh, one of my guys, they said, sear off the lamb, put it in the saute pan, in the oven. Now he put that much oil in. Normally you just put a little. So when I pulled it out quick, oh, yeah. The, yeah. the wave came over, and I was like, you motherfucker. I looked at him. That's <laughs> a nice little burn He was over there, right there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he got demoted. It was... Wow. So, but you know what? We had a great show, and we had um, the, the one the one you're talking about, season five, we had a, I had to jump out of a plane. So the first episode, was it the first? First episode, first challenge, our sous chefs cooked first, and my sous chef lost, so I lost points. So if our sous chefs cooked against somebody else's sous chef, if our sous chef lost, I got penalized. 
So he lost the first, you know, he did pretty well in general, but that first one, so I was down, so I had like a demerit. And they're like, okay, either, either you skydive into the airfield where we're going to cook, or you can drive, but if you drive, you lose five more points. So that, then I would have been down. So, and, and I'm so like, I'm and I was heavier than I am now, right? Have you ever skydived before that moment? Or? you ever see fat guys jumping out of planes? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have to think about that. Maybe. No. But first of all, getting into the Smurf uniform was like, you know. <laughs> Holy now, wait. You go in tandem. You're on somebody's back. Someone's on my, someone's behind me. Yes. Right, 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 right. That's so right. so first, your back. we do a little role play yes. on, on the field, whatever. And so before, so the, the Curtis Stone, who's the, the chef, the host, he's like, we're going to be skydiving. And we're all like, shit, man. This is like, <laughs> so nobody wants to do it. And somebody's like. If Burke does it, I'll do it. I'm like, fuck you, man. You're the great guy. Yeah, yeah. You're the, and I'm like, you're I'm down with doing it. Just because you said that. <laughs> so I go, I'm in. I'm doing it. Let me go get my cup of coffee. I'm done in there. So most people, the guy who wind up winning the whole thing from Napa to Doug, he couldn't t- do it. Nobody knew that, but he could. So he drove. But that was episode one. We had like 18 episodes. He drove, everyone else skydived. And I had to tell you, it was, it was the best part of, I only watched a few episodes. I should really, like, re, um, YouTube, would YouTube them or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I, that one I had to watch because my parents, everybody was just dying. That's crazy. I was the we first one on the plane. Scary stuff. Yeah, we'll we, find that clip. Yeah, but, but in the meantime, you could YouTube, what, Data Burke jumping out of an airplane, I would it's, imagine. Uh, <laughs> Top Chef Masters, Season 5, Episode 1. Always take a chance. You know? I'm not in the industry as a rule bender, but now I'm really like, uh, I might die just to get an extra hour of busting my ass. It's time. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. And then the back of the plane just flies open, and then all of a sudden they just start walking in front. Is that David Burke? Where did he go? David Burke is gone. <laughs> I'm feeling I'm a Superman here. We're flying. Oh, 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 it's hilarious. That is great. So what? And I have a torn rotator cuff. I didn't tell them because they ask you medical questions. Yeah, you I'm like, yeah, what the hell's I going to do? Nothing. But then skydiving. So when I, so I got the guy behind me. They take the, you know, the, the, it's like a military plane. That you, it's like a dump yep, truck goes yep, out the back yep. and you just, so they pushed me out because I was, pan- I was going to change my mind. I'm like, how many money people watch your show? I can't like bail out. Nah, you can't. That's like, a bad look. Like, there's me and this guy, Franklin Becker, sitting there. I'm like, this is a bad idea. At that point, you just <laughs> You're thinking about your will. You, you're looking at patches of ground, you know. Uh-huh. How I was it though? Do you want to do it again? Never, I've never I would out. never do it again. I did it once. And I'll never I would I'll bungee jump again. again. I bungee jumped to New Zealand. Yeah, that much because jumping when there's water, yes. when there's water involved, bungee jumping, you know, there's a chance <laughs> no matter what happens, you're going to live. Skydiving, something happens, you scream. Oh, God. I don't if you know. panic or you freak. But you're tandem with somebody, so at least you have a professional. I don't even know the guy. I'm going to trust the guy I'm tandem with. I'm like, yeah, I don't, you know. So he's behind me. We get rolled out. We start back flipping. Like, we, I had no idea. He didn't tell me about the flip. So I, I'm like, it's crazy shit. So then he, we pull a cord. Yeah. My my rotator cuff sends me into oh, God. blackout, the pain. Oh, my God. So I get like a five second of just, and now I open my eyes and I see a guy in front of me with a camera who I assume is my tandem guy because they didn't tell us there's going to be another guy. There's another guy filming. There's another guy who's... And there you are flying through the air. I'm like, I thought he was, I thought he got loose and he was filming. He's got a cool face, but good luck with that. If you're you're watching, you'll see every other word is beeped out. Oh, man. All right. But again, great experience. It certainly wasn't on my bucket list, but it's in that bucket. And that's it. I'll never do it again. Some people like it. Not for me. So, shifting gears... Two cookbooks. Yeah. Cookware line. Yeah. And you're starting to sell your own food items. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, what's the what, what's the well, what's the secret here? Because that, that's, uh, that's a lot. That's you know a lot what? The secret is, is creating a brand, mm-hmm. you know, and that's something that you know, believe it or not, my first cookbook they came to me. I was a young uh, man cooking great food at the River Cafe. Okay. And uh, a publisher from Knopf came and goes, I want to publish your book. Got a great story. Because <laughs> your food is like nobody else has ever seen. Wow. And he did uh, Jacques Papin, Pierre Fren. He did some of the Julie Todd books. He goes, this is just not part of any copycat food. This is new stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll do a book. I mean, I didn't like say, hey, oh, it's time for me to do a book. I know what I'm talking about. And the first book came out. And, uh, and we won some awards. And we represented the United States and in in, uh, Japan for the Culinary Olympics, which was in the 88. We won two big, but didn't expect to win anything. You know, we, I was 26. It was 15 countries. And we won two of the best medals. And um, so coming back to New York from that was, was a big, uh, yeah, that was when the momentum started. Yep. But that was all print. We just talked about print. New York Times, New York Magazine, uh, the food uh, the food magazines. You didn't have Instagram. You didn't have social media. So you were really oh, so admired sad. by your peers, had to, had to get you some <laughs> huh? I said, oh, would I be so sad about not having Instagram any longer, let me tell you. So that's how it started. And then... Uh, putting your name on restaurants. You yeah. know, really, when you put my first restaurant, the David Berger Donatello, mm-hmm. that had my name on it, you know, it takes a little, some cojones because people never put their full name on stuff. Mm-hmm. It's Shea Paul mm-hmm. or right. Shea Catherine or, yeah. uh, or Danielle. Just or in case. John George. Yeah. <laughs> just, just in, in case. case somebody doesn't fucking like it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was well, my first restaurant. Not my first. Not my first. Dave, no, that's a different name. Different name. <laughs> Come eat my food. <laughs> Food poison? Oh, that was my cousin Dave. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so, a few of us. So it's David Berg and Donatello, right? And my old boss is a partner of mine. He created TJ Fridays and Smith and Lensky, uh, Alan Stone. Great guy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, but a great marketing guy. And he's jogging by the city, Upper East Side. And he looks at me and he sees the awning. And he's like, because that's a strange name for a restaurant. And I said, well, Smith & Lansky is a strange name for a restaurant, too. It's pretty famous. He, go, he said, it sounds Italian, David Brokendonson. I said, well, Smith & Lansky sounds Polish. And he goes, good point. You got me. You got me there. You got to say. Now, and he meant all the best intentions. But David Brokendonatella sounded like a hair salon. I could see It sounded like a restaurant. Uh-huh. Wait, but at the end of the day, if it's great, it doesn't matter it what it is. It doesn't matter what it's called. They'll figure it out, as long as that's you can right. spell it. That's right. right? right. Or oh, you pronounce it. You know, you get a, a restaurant, but that's called, like, Quo Vadis was a great yeah. restaurant. It's like... I can't even get yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what and that but being the full name, then we put one in Bloomingdale's, New York City, uh, Chicago. We had the best place, Vegas. So you put it where the eyeballs are, sure. And you don't realize how many eyeballs are seeing the brand on a daily basis, that's right. A year after year, day after day, and then in the cook, you know, we have cookware and stores all over the world now. So you know, you don't realize. Like, I got work people that work for me in, uh, from the Philippines, and they're like, ah, oh, you know, let me take a picture. My mother has your cookware. And I'm, they're like a busboy. I'm like, okay. That's why. <laughs> so they go. So the brand starts to work for you while you sleep. Yeah. And that's 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 been, that's really been very helpful for me financially during the pandemic mm, sure. because the restaurant business just collapsed. Yeah. The fin- our cash flow dried up. Yeah. And that pots and pan business soared because people stayed at home making that's sourdough right. bread. That's right. And baking cupcakes and yeah. And killing time. And now this fourth quarter, now that we're locked down a little bit again, it's going to be a good. Uh, but you know, again, you got to protect that mm-hmm. because if you have something like some of the celebrity chefs, friends of mine, they've had a falling out over the, a couple of years back due to whatever it was, Me Too movements, drugs, sex, rock and roll, harassment, sure. uh, you know, tax evasion, whatever it may be, you, then you're done because the accusation sinks the ship. That's right. You know, and that's Reputation it. is everything. Yeah. So, so you lost you lost quite a bit of weight in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, are you cooking with, because now with everything going on in the world and all you know, these healthy people in the world, everybody wants to make sure they look at every single ingredient and what they're eating. Do you find that your cooking style has quite changed a little bit maybe to tailor to all these, these Yeah, food our nuts? cooking style has changed. I eat, I, I, you know, not because it's mentally, but my body craves healthier food. Right. And I just think it's an age thing. Like I, you know... I try not to eat, and I don't eat late at night like I used to. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm not, and, and during the pandemic, I lost weight because I didn't buy any bread at home. You're the I, only one. Know, I swear to God, people were laughing about You're it. You're the only one. Are you I work. keto, like consciously? Or no, you I, you know what? If I don't buy bread, that means I don't eat butter or mayonnaise. True. <laughs> right? Why, you don't cook with butter a lot? Uh, well, I'll have one, and um, especially at home. I mean, good. very little butter. If I, in the videos, when I do use butter, it's so thick in the soil, and I love the butter, but if I can't, if I can cook with olive oil, or any oil, I'll use that first, mm-hmm. and I use butter as a specialty seasoning mm-hmm. ingredient. Um, but again, I'm whipping cream and making pastry. I'm not. I'm not making a healthy. I'm not going after a healthier, a healthier style. It just happens to be what I crave. Right. But for pastry, man, you don't cut a corner on the no, fat. You don't cut no. sugar. No. I mean, that's like. Yeah. You might as well like half pregnant, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
So tell us about uh, your newest restaurant. That is, it's opening that's tomorrow, tomorrow right? yeah, I mean, tomorrow. so talk about scaling back, yeah. it was the opposite. You're yeah. actually opening a lot of restaurants during the pandemic. Good for we, you. We kept yeah. busy, man. But we had, some of them were planned, so we just said, let's go for it. Yeah, yeah. And some of them just popped up, but we did Asbury, we opened a pop-up, which is closed now. We did it for the summer. Right. It's a great foray into uh, Asbury. Um, Are you going to be moving permanent to Asbury next we're year? We're looking at something interesting there, yep. And uh, we might be coming to... Right back? Within a five mile radius of this building. Interesting. You know, pretty All soon. Right. Um, we're in Seabright, obviously. We're doing great there. Sure. We had a great summer because you're on the beach. Right. right. Outdoor dining and this and that. Um, I lived there. That but East yeah. Brunswick, we open. It's with the... The Chateau. The uh, Chateau right? Grand guys. Chateau Grand. Um, and, yeah, Marilla Brothers, Vito Cucci. Sure. Great guys. Yep. And they built that? a beautiful hotel. When I tell you, it's like Versailles. It's like being in France. Really? And they built a beautiful hotel. We have the restaurant. It's, it was on an old apple orchard that's built. So it's called Orchard Park by David. saw photos. It looks amazing. No, probably the best looking restaurant I've seen. I don't want to say uh, in, in years. Beautiful built. Uh, Andre Escobar, who's a friend of mine who designed David Burton Hotel, he did the interior deck design for the restaurant bar. The hotel's beautiful. The bar. We can't use the bar yet. But we did two practice runs. We opened tomorrow night. It's on Cranberry Road. Yeah. And you you approach this, and they have a you know they have the Grand Chateau next to it, which is a big wedding catering facility, sure. best in the state. And they have all the Christmas the big trees lit up. You know you just you got to slow down when you drive by. Yeah. And hope you know, hopefully come in. So the restaurant's it's, uh, it's smartly designed. It looks like a Grand Cafe or European uh, brasserie with American touches, salt walls, and uh, wow. and it's our food. And you know you can get a burger, you can get a pizza. You get some pasta, you can get a dry aged steak or a nice piece of bronzino. So, Great. you know, the menu mix is good. It's, it's got a little blue collar in it and it's got a little bit of high end in it. So. And this is what, your 20? No, it's about 15. 15 for yeah. a start. But we have some other, we have a, we operate about 18 concepts. Mm -hmm. Like two of them are in one hotel. So we just, I call that one. You know, we got the Breckenridge Distillery. We do a restaurant. That's more consulting. Sure. So we own about a little more than a dozen. We own and operate and manage. And then some of them are just license or you know, we're going to Saudi Arabia next month we're opening two restaurants there Get out of here. yeah wow. very cool yeah. so you're going to be physically going there to Saudi Arabia? I go I got to go I go for two and a half weeks and then one week a year but I have to send my chefs out and managers for three months two months and one month layer them in for the openings and then uh, then we go back from are eight. they open there like are they at capacity yeah the, the, the COVID isn't as bad there either I mean it's, it's hot so they're yeah. not getting the second wave like we are and they don't have uh, they don't have uh, two different uh, political parties. There. Yeah, they just well, have one. So that will do it. <laughs> yeah, they follow I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> so we're just about out of time, but go check out uh, one of fifteen of David's restaurants. Maybe buy some cookware, a cookbook, some prepared foods. Yeah, the cookware. I, cook. I got one more kid in college. Come on, Come on support this man. He needs help. <laughs> And we can spend can, all day with you. Yeah, I can spend so, all day with you, uh, man. Like, this is, this well, is I live local, so. Fun. But check but, out the, yeah. the next issue of You Magazine coming out in January. We're going to have an exclusive interview with David. And we're going to talk Good about stuff, some other man. things that we didn't get a chance to cover today in, in this episode. Great. And that's it. Thanks for coming, Dave. Thank you. And it's all about the, uh, it's all about the view. My pleasure. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Have a good time. night.